Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well this morning. you all are doing well this morning. Um, we're going to go into prayer for those of you who are um, new to this. <laughs> uh, I am uh, Sister Shelley, and uh, this is Wednesday morning midweek prayer, 6 a.m. prayer, um, how to slay in prayer. Um, and um, <clears throat> We pray every Wednesday morning um, on IG, IG Live at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you ever want to join live, I know um, um, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> if you ever want to join live, you can. Um, you can also leave your prayer request in the uh, DM and um, you know, or send me your prayer request and I will uh, be praying with you. I'll be praying with you concerning your situation. Um, I pray that you all are doing well this morning and um, I have been up, you know, we had the, uh, the time change, the fall back here. Um, time went back an hour so. Um, this morning, I, you know, <laughs> I already wake up, you know, extremely early for, you know, various reasons, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, anyway, this morning I was up at four and um, it just felt like it was time for prayer. And I was like, what, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? And so, you know, um, it was not, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we're here. So um, I'm going to uh, share a little bit with you. And uh, we're going to go into prayer. Excuse me. Now I'm sleepy because it seems like I'm, I, you know, I've already been up. So <laughs> God knows just sitting here uh, listening to the word and um, the Lord has uh, been uh, really um, speaking to me about the sons of Eli and um, I taught on this on Sunday it was it was wasn't really a teaching it was more so um, me just you know uh, what I was hearing the Lord say and uh, I have I have taught on this before I have uh, preached on this before hope you guys can hear me um, I have preached on this uh, before uh, a couple times before actually but um, you know this is something that just came back around in my um, in my spirit and the Lord is highlighting it and so I'm going to share with you here um, you know what the Lord is impressing on my heart what the Spirit of God is impressing on my heart um, concerning this um, 2nd Samuel hallelujah 2nd Samuel and try to uh, be quick here. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, not Second Samuel. First Samuel. Um, <clears throat> this is really. Uh, This is just, a, you know, something that the Spirit of God is highlighting um, because I know that, uh, you know, he is, uh, he is doing this. This is happening. This is going on. And um, <clears throat> I'm in 2 Samuel, excuse me, 1 Samuel chapter 
2 and verse uh, 12, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. And it says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And uh, the sons of Belial, it means the uh, sons of Belial, um, basically means sons of Satan, okay? Sons of the devil. Um, <laughs> they were, uh, you know, they, they were wicked. They were wicked men. It says they knew not the Lord. And they, um, this is uh, talking about, you know, the sons of Eli. Now, for those of you who don't know, Eli was a priest, um, uh, you know, in the house of God during that time. And these were his two sons. And um, they were also in the office of the priest um, in the house of God. So God is speaking concerning his own Okay, his own priest, his own ministers. And he's saying that they're in the house of God, but they are sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. We have many um, priest ministers of God who are speaking for God and, you know, um, standing you know, in, in the office of a priest or a minister, but they know not the Lord. They know not the Lord. And um, this is a very dangerous thing, okay? And I'm going to reveal something to you concerning this um, when it comes to Eli. And we're going to stop here, though, because um, I preached this before concerning the sons of Eli and how God is doing away with the Eli priesthood, right? And he's replacing it with men uh, of God, men and women of God after his heart, you know, a faithful priest um, who will do according to what, what is in God's heart and, and so on. So, um, but we, if, you, if you're unaware, just read that, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, um, starting at verse 12 there, talking about the sons of Eli and how they were... Uh, they were uh, sleeping, you know, with the women in the house of God, how they misused the offerings um, in the house of God. And they, uh, you know, they were greedy, you know, they were uh, they were greedy and they took uh, the first and the best part of the offering for themselves and so on and so forth. OK, and um God judged them, you know, God judged uh, Eli for not rebuking his sons, not rebuking his sons or not, uh, you know, correcting his sons. You know, some, uh, this, this, this says a lot about parenthood when, you know, when we're raising our children and we're not um, paying attention, we're not paying attention to our children and what they are doing, what they are doing. <clears throat> um, we're not uh, correcting our children, you know, when they're wrong. And we're so, you know, we, we that means that we've placed our children in a place uh, um, of an idol. You know what I mean? Like we, we are, we are, uh, um, we've made idols. Anything that you are afraid to correct afraid to cut off you know if your right hand offends offends you cut it off if your right eye offends you gouge it out anything that we are afraid to cut off that means afraid to address or deal with head on face on you know then we have to check ourselves there because that means that quite possibly we've made an idol out of that thing. We've made an idol out of that thing or that person. And a lot of people make idols out of their children. You know, you know, Hannah could have made an idol out of Samuel because, you know, <laughs> she, everything she went through to get Samuel, but no, she sacrificed him to the Lord. She gave him to the Lord. And in exchange, God blessed Hannah with more children. 
more children. So she gave her first uh, to the Lord. And so that's a lesson right there. But I want to say something here about how Eli knew not, uh, his sons knew not the Lord. He, they knew not the Lord, right? Um, a lot of us are, 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 uh, oh God, I hate to you go down this road, you know, because I know that, you know, <laughs> people tend to take things wrong, you know, when they, when, when they're being rubbed the wrong way, but we have to become accustomed to being rubbed the wrong way. I had to become accustomed to being rubbed the wrong way. And I am, you know, often rubbed the wrong way because that just means that your flesh don't like something that God is trying to correct. Okay. Again, correcting children, correcting his children. God is correcting his children. He is correcting us, you all. He's correcting us. And we have to be willing to yield and submit to correction. And the Lord is saying here um, that uh, many of us are, um, um, you know, it's one thing when you are uh, doing something in innocence. This is when, you know, the spirit of God is looking on the heart as he always does. When you're doing something in innocence and you're zealous for the Lord, you may have zeal without knowledge, um, but you're doing it out of your love and your passion for the Lord, right? And 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 you are, uh, you know, since that the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is leading you and guiding you that way, okay? But I'm talking about people who are standing up in their pride, and they're doing things with a different motive, right? Because they have their own agenda. They want to be, you know, the, the, the you know, the uh, big man on deck, you know what I mean? Or the big, you know, uh, you know, they want influence, okay? And they want to be seen. They want to be heard. And a lot of times it's because they want money, you know, and things like that. Um, when people are standing up in their pride, hello. Oh, sorry. I didn't notice. I have people. God bless you. Uh, oh, sister, you both. God bless you, sis. <laughs> it's on this morning, sister Ruth. Um, God bless you. True woman of God. God bless you. Thank you. True women of God. God bless you all. Um, thank you for joining. Um, so, you know, it's one thing, you know, for that but when you're standing up in your pride and you are um you know professing yourself to be something or to know something um that you that that is false you know what i mean and you're preaching um false doctrine you're preaching false doctrine god's been dealing a lot with false doctrine Okay, you're preaching false doctrine. Sometimes you can be preaching false doctrine simply because your heart is not in the right place. Simply because you have a different motive other than God's motive for what you're preaching. Okay, and so God is saying that um, um, the uh, these you know these sons of Eli. It says they were priests all right. They were ministers all right, but they knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord, right? Now, then you see Samuel. Samuel was a child, right? He was, ch he was a child in the house of God, and he ministered unto the Lord out of his innocence, you know, out of the innocence of his heart. And he was a faithful priest. Why? Because God put him there. God put him there. God is the one who, the Bible says uh, in verse 35, and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. So when God sent judgment upon Eli and his sons, right, and destroyed them and cut off that priesthood, guess what? Samuel replaced Eli, right, in terms of the priesthood, but Samuel also had sons. Samuel also had sons. And guess what? 
Samuel's sons, if you look uh, at, uh, I think it's in uh, chapter 7, Samuel's sons did the same thing. Now, it doesn't say that they slept with the women in the church and, and you know, in the temple and, and they were, you know, destroying the offerings and stuff. But it says that they were, uh, they were, um, you know, after money. They were after money. They didn't do according to, uh, you know, w what their father did. They were after money. They were after money. So, so you see... Um, that same thing happening there, this is, uh, you know, the ministers of the Lord have a tendency to go this way. And that is the reason why, you know, and, and it's the devil that is, a, that is, you know, making them go this way. That they begin to chase after money. They, they begin to follow after money and fame and influence, you know, and their motive is perverted. Um, mm, their motives are perverted. Their motives are perverted because ministry is not a business. And, 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 you know, and, and we keep seeing this same thing over and over and over in the Bible. Why? Because God is warning. He's warning us, you all. You know, and why did Jesus say what he said? He said, you cannot serve God and mammon because you know a lot of these ministers and, and preachers they started out the right way they were called by God Eli was put into that office by God you know his sons you know and everything um but then you know the devil perverted them the devil perverted them and now, you know, we see the same thing happening to Eli's sons. Now, I'm not going to go back and preach the message that I just preached uh, a couple weeks ago about, you know, uh, the wolves and the money. Um, I have a message on my podcast called Fishers of Men, Fishers of Money or Fishers of Men. Um, so you can listen to that. But there, but there is a, um, this is a spirit. And. What's happening, if you look at it, you know, if you zoom out and look at this on a broader scale, you know, um, and see the big picture here, we see that the God of this world, right, the God of this world, who is, you know, Satan, and the one thing that he uses to lure, you know, so many people into destruction is money, right, or wealth and fame. Wealth and fame, wealth and fame. You know, everybody wants some money. Everybody trying to get rich. That's why, you know, it should never be in our heart the desire to want to be rich. The desire to want. Yeah, because the Bible says that if, if that is your desire, that is going to become your motive. When that is your desire, it's going to lead you into very uh, many Foolish and hurtful lust. Go and read it for yourself. Go and read it for yourself. I know, I know. You're like, well, Sister Shelley, you know, well, you want everybody to be poor. And, you know, <clears throat> just because you, oh, you got a spirit of poverty on, on you and that kind of thing. No, it's not. It, it's not that. It's, it's the fact that, you know, we have to have things in order. We, we have to have things in order. Does God want us to have wealth? Yes. Does Sister Shelley want wealth? Yes, I do. But I don't, it's not my desire or I don't, it, it's not what's leading me. It's not what's motivating me. I really could care less. I care more about my soul than I do money. That's the thing, you all. And I hope you hear this in love. You have to care more about your soul and the souls of of men, the souls of people, more so than you do money. You cannot be chasing after money. God bless you, ET Square 13. God bless you. You cannot be chasing after money, y'all. And I know we're taught this, you know, from our youth and stuff, especially those of us who were, um, you, you know, raised in poverty and things like that. 
you know, go, you know, you got to make some money and you got to get this and get that. And especially when we get into desperate situations and that's where the devil meets you, though. That's where he meets you right there in that desperate situation to offer you an Ishmael instead of Isaac. And you begin to say that is the voice of the Lord. It is not the voice of the Lord. It is not the voice of the Lord. Listen, Abraham was promised. He received the promise from God, right? God promised Abraham a son. You, you know, but then, you know, when his own wife now, he could have said, you know, well, this is my wife. She's a woman of God. I know this is the voice of God telling me to go into my, go into her handmaid. To produce a son, you know, and he did that. He he, he did that though. <laughs> he did that and produced an Ishmael instead of Isaac. What am I saying? Ishmael and Isaac look very. They were brothers. They were brothers. That meant that they shared so many similarities. They looked alike. You will you will mistake an Ishmael for the real thing. We have to check our hearts, motives, you all. Now watch what happened. Samuel had sons as well. And the Bible says that Samuel's sons did the same thing. When they grew up, they were priests in the house of God. And they also, their hearts departed from the Lord and started following after Baal, following after money, following after money. But if you notice, <laughs> you know, God did not uh, destroy Samuel's house the way that he destroyed Eli and his priesthood. Why? 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 Because God does not look on the outward appearance of things, but he looks on the heart. Now, were they judged for that? I'm sure. But Samuel himself, that was God's, you know, anointed. And he knew the Lord. That's the thing. He knew the Lord. He knew the Lord. The Bible says that uh, Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. He knew the Lord. You can tell if you watch and read through there, you'll see, you know, his behavior shows that he knows the Lord. Well, when you look at Eli, his behavior don't show that he really knew the Lord because, you know, he may have knew of the Lord, but did you know the Lord? He may have knew, you know, uh, the Torah, but did you know the Lord? Because this man was an alcoholic. So, you know what I'm saying? And that, that will pervert your judgment now. But, 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 but it says that, and it says that, um, uh, Eli, y'all, Eli, um, let, 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 let's, let's zoom in here on knowing the Lord. Let's zoom in on knowing the Lord. Knowing the Lord, knowing the Lord, okay? Many times we think because we know scriptures that we know the Lord. Because we're preaching scripture that we know the Lord. Because we're in the priest's office that we know the Lord. Because we're in the house of God that we know the Lord. Right? But these sons of Eli knew not the Lord. They were priests, but they knew not the Lord. So they handled the law. That means they handled the word of God. They handled the law, right? 
The law is just a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. Whoa. Did anybody hear that? The law is just a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. This thing is about knowing Christ in so much that we become a reflection of him. We become a reflection of him. When you know someone intimately, your soul and their soul become one. When a man and woman join themselves in, in, in marriage and consummate that marriage, they too become one flesh. They too become one flesh. Two souls, you know, becoming one. Two souls tying themselves together. Tying themselves together. They knew, they because they know each other. And, and they continually go through that journey of knowing each other, right? Each time they come together and have an encounter, an intimate encounter, they know each other even more. The strong, the, the, the tie, the soul tie, the stronghold, the bond becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Why is the Lord highlighting this? He's highlighting this because he wants us to know him. He doesn't want us to be out here, you know, um, reckless when it comes to the souls of people. He wants us to know him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to know him. Zeal is good, but zeal without knowledge, you see. So what is, you know, because what happened to Eli? What happened to Eli? Um, the Bible says that uh, the lamp went out. The lamp went out in the house of God. The lamp went out in the house of God. Let me find this here. Ooh, the lamp went out in the house of God, you all. What does that mean? The light, the light, his light went out. His light went out. And when it's talking about the lamp, it's talking about light. Light represents knowledge. It represents revelation where God reveals himself to you. God reveals himself to you through his word. See, the scriptures are one thing, right? But the word, the, the word must become spirit and life. You must touch it. You must taste it. Yes, you must touch it. Yes, but then you must handle it. You have to know how you have to know, uh, learn how to wield it like a sword because it is the it is a sword. That means you have to get in it. You have to dig in it. You have to learn it. And then, it, it, and then let it become, after you learn it, after you learn it, you don't just go preaching. That word has to become bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. I, I, I ministered last week about, you know, how people say time don't matter. You know, how long you've been in the Lord don't matter. I understand why they're saying that because many people say, you know, well, I've been in church this many years and, you know, expect people to think you know God when you really don't. But time does matter in the sense that people who have been, you know, put in their time with God they ha and, and have experienced and have allowed God 
to deal with them, to correct them. They have allowed God to crucify them. They have taken up their cross. They have denied themselves and followed what the word says to the point where they died in it. What does that mean? Are they still alive? Yes, but they died to the word. We die to the word when we allow that word to crucify us. When we allow that sword to pierce us. When we allow that word to become bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, that's what it means. It has to pierce you. It has to cut you. <sighs> See, oh God, the, what they did to Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus is what the word does to us. Ooh, I wish you could hear it by the spirit. Why did God allow that? You see, and we all know the reason. I, I, I'm, I'm saying in terms of allowing, oh, y'all not going to like this, okay. Allowing, why did God allow the devil to crucify? Why did God allow wicked men, wicked hands to crucify? Jesus. Why does God allow the enemy to touch your life? Why was he offered up on that cross? And when you look at a cross, it's it it's really looks like a sword. Like a sword. The Bible says that the word of God is like a sharp two-edged sword. It is quick. It is powerful. Piercing and dividing asunder. Piercing and dividing asunder the soul from the spirit. See, we have to understand the difference between the soul and the spirit. If we don't understand that, then we will be operating out of our soul, thinking that we're following the spirit of God and we're not. It's two different realms. It's two different dimensions. It's two different things. Your soul is your own mind, your own will, your own emotions. But then the spirit of God is a whole nother thing. He says, my thoughts, as high as the heavens are above uh, the earth, so are, my so are my thoughts above your thoughts. And so are my ways above your ways. See, it's the thing that doesn't look like it doesn't make much sense in the natural realm, in the physical realm. But it is God. In the spirit realm, it is, you know, it is spiritual. God is a spirit. He doesn't see things the way we see. That's why he keeps telling us to come up, come up, come up hither. And I will show you things that you know not of. First Samuel chapter three. It says, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Oh, see, we're in a time where the real word of God, there is a famine, not for meat or drink, but for the hearing of my word, says the Lord. My word. How can that be when so many people are filling up church pews and the word of God is being, yeah, but no, the scriptures might be being preached. And let me tell you, the scriptures are being preached in, in, in other kinds of churches too, not just your kind. The scriptures are being preached in satanic churches. The, preach, the scriptures are being preached by demons. 
what does the Bible say? Doctrines of devils. Hello, demons. I just came across a, a, a video yesterday where yet another, uh, you know, uh, alphabet um, preacher, uh, alphabet uh, uh, preacher is, is, is standing up in the pulpit preaching. And, and and that word was talking about Tinkerbells and, and, and gold dust and all kind of stuff. And I'm like, what? What? Sitting up, standing up there in full drag, full drag, full drag. This man was in the house of God. And I said, oh, Lord. The abomination of desolation is closer than we think. When the real Antichrist, the man, will stand up in the house of God and offer himself on the altar of God, as it, as it was in the days of Daniel. What sh what God showed, oh, God. that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew uh, twenty four when he was talking about the end of the end of this thing. He said, "When you see that, when you see that abomination of desolation, see that's where we're headed." That's where we're headed, and it's fastly approaching. I know some of you all live in the physical, you know, so you know, spend so much time in the carnal realm, and you know, and it's, and it's not to belittle you because, you know, um, we many of us have you know more carnal, carnal responsibilities than others, so it requires more time in the carnal realm. However, God is saying. Press, press your way, press your way into the spirit realm so that you can really get to know me, really get to know me because you're going to need it. You're going to need that discernment. You're going to need that spiritual wisdom, that spiritual insight, foresight, perception, you're going to need eyes to see and ears to hear in the spirit realm because this thing is fastly approaching. If you can see it in the spirit now, I see things moving at the speed of light. I do. I see things happening so fast. You know, that it scares me. It literally scares me. It scares me. It makes me sad to see, you know, uh, you know what I mean? When you look at the reality of man, the state of, 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 of humans, the state of human beings, the state of mankind, and what the enemy has done to mankind. It makes me sad. It, it makes me cry. My heart hurts. Because I'm like, Lord, as, as much as we pray, as much as we intercede, as much as this, this thing is, we're, it, it's not stopping. And he says, hmm, I gave them free will. They have to live out their own decisions. They have to experience the truth, not just hear about it. And he says, you know, I, 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 you know, it's a wonder how God sees things because, you know, he is light and in him there is no darkness. No, not at all. It's a wonder why God see, sees things happening at the speed of light. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. You know, things must happen for before him at the speed of light 
he must be able to see at the speed of light, the real speed of light now, <laughs> you know? And he knows the end from the beginning and it's just like, it's just like pages flying in a book to him, flying by. <laughs> But yet he said, but yet he slows down to behold the things in the earth. He slows down to deal with us and to handle us and to correct us and to help us understand. To help us understand. Yet he's long suffering and patient with us. Can you imagine? He doesn't have to be. Can you imagine that? I just, I, I think, I think, you know, on these things often, and I don't want people to be like, you know, well, I, I really don't care anymore about people saying, well, you, you just think you too deep and you super deep and you super spiritual. I'd rather be super spiritual than less spiritual. I'd rather be super deep than not deep enough and then go off the deep end and go under the deep because I wasn't deep enough. You know, six feet deep because I wasn't deep enough. Oh, Lord. Anywho, um, it says the, son, the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. That means it was rare. There was no open vision. So it says the word of the Lord was rare. Now, how could that be? They had the Torah. They had the law. Just like we have the law. Huh? Right? But it says that it was rare. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord was rare. And it says, and it came to pass, it says there was no open vision. Do you see that? So the word of the Lord as an open vision or the word of the Lord revealed or made known unto you. So that you can see it with your spiritual eyes. You can look into that grave and see. You experience the fact that the grave is empty. Rabba soko robosa. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. It says there was no open vision, right? And then it says he could not, he could no longer see. He could not see. See, this Bible is not just about words on a page. It is about seeing. It's about spiritual vision. Spiritual vision, seeing. It says, and ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. So Samuel was sleeping. How many of us are sleeping? He was laid down to sleep. How many of us are sleeping? Laying down like dumb dogs. The Bible says that they, you know, they love to sleep in slumber. Laying down to sleep. Laying down to sleep and to slumber. I, I, I talked about this on Sunday. I touched on this on Sunday. I think I'll go ahead and post that message. I wasn't going to post it, but I... I may go ahead and post it. It, it was just, it was kind of long, you know, because it was Sunday. I was, you know, teaching my son. But this is what it's saying. So we're talking about the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord. 
or the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord revealed or made known unto you, made known unto you, right? Made known unto you. Um, uh, there is a scripture in here. Um, let's see. Uh, is it verse 19? Mm. Uh, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Uh, and all Israel knew that he was established to be a prophet of the Lord and the Lord appeared. Okay. Um, where is this? There's a scripture in here that talks about how the Lord made himself known unto Samuel. And we see a difference there because the sons of Eli knew not the Lord, but the Lord made himself known unto Samuel because Samuel was chosen by God. Samuel was chosen by God. He was also a man after God's own heart, even before David. He was a man after God's own heart. Are we, are we after God's heart or are we after something else? Are we after God's heart or are we after something else? You know, our, you know, we, we just need to say a lot and think about that. Are we after God's heart or, or are we after something else? Anyway. Let, let, um, let's pray. Let's pray. They, they, these um, sons of Eli, they knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. They were preaching, but they knew not the Lord. They, they knew not the Lord. Their heart was departed from the Lord. They knew not the Lord. They were not close to God. They were not close to God. They were not close to the Lord. The Lord says, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. There are times that the Lord will hide himself in order for you to seek him. Because he wants to know how bad do you want me? Or are you satisfied with just your carnal existence? Are you satisfied with, you know, just with the things I've blessed you with and now, you know, you don't want me anymore? You don't chase after me? The reason I don't like a lot of uh, uh, the preaching that I hear is because it teaches people to chase after things instead of chasing after God. And that's just the truth, you know. When we always dangle a blessing in front of people and money in front of people and marriage in front of people and, you know, um, you know, blessings, uh, promises that God has made to his people. When we constantly dangle these things in front of people, you know, then it, it causes the people to follow after those things instead of following after God. That's why he said last time, what are you leading with? Or what are you, you know, putting before my people? What, what are you leading them with? Because I want to lead them, says the Lord. And we have to lead them to God instead of leading them to things. And I know sometimes, you know, you come back on the back end 
and be like, well, you have to be, have to obey God to get this stuff, and you have to, you know, you have to do this to get this and this and that. On the back end, yeah. But most of our messages are not that way, and the stuff that we put on social media is not that way. It's presenting a different image of God, that God is some kind of, you know, genie in a bottle or some kind of Santa Claus or some kind of, you know. So the way we present things, it, it, it reveals our motive. It reveals our motive. Because we know deep down inside that if we, if we you know, present these things, that people want these things and they will follow us because they want to hear more about these things. You know, these blessings, <clears throat> monetary uh, blessings and so on. You know, they they will follow my they'll follow my page they'll follow my channel they'll follow my <clears throat> my ministry if I keep dangling these things in front of them. What about when you take those things away and just give them Jesus, just the raw truth, the raw Jesus? Because Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't lead people around with blessings. God, you know, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. No, he was, he, he gave them the truth straight up. He said, if you want to follow me, you have to uh, deny yourself, take up your cross, and then come follow me. You have to forsake these things. You have to forsake them or give them up. Be willing to give them up. You know, you have to be willing to lose your life here in the earth. That you may receive life. But, but we're teaching a, a reverse doctrine, you know. We're teaching people to save their life and not lose their life. So you, are we seeing the difference? Are we? I really, really wish we could see this now for what it is. God understands our situations, but he also knows that, you know, what, he, what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. He also knows when we're in faith and when we're not in faith. And, and we can't fool anybody. You know, we, we might be able to fool people, but we can't fool God with that. We have to tell ourselves the truth and be like, no, I'm not in faith here. You know, God wants me to do this. God wants me to do that. And I keep trying to do my own thing and put God's stamp on it. And, and you know, and it's just not working. It's just not working anymore. <sighs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just, I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the spirit of truth that leads us into all truths, that uncovers, that unveils, that reveals those things that are hidden in darkness. Father, we want to face the things that are in darkness. We want to face the things that are hidden behind the veil of our hearts. We want to face those things that you see working in us. We want to repent of those things that we may be whole, that we may enter into your kingdom. Father, I'm lifting up my brothers and sisters in Christ. We come to you as one body, giving you thanks, giving you praise for all that you are, for all that you do. Surely you supply all, you have supplied all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Surely, Lord, 
Surely, Lord, you have blessed us and are blessing us. You are our reward. We thank you, Father, for the roof over our heads, the food on our tables, the clothes on our back. For our lives, health, and strength this morning, we thank you, Father, for the life, health, and strength of our families, our households, our loved ones, our friends. Thank you, Father God, for another day, another chance to please you. Thank you for brand new mercy. Thank you for your compassions that fail not, but are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. We magnify your holy name. We exalt you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and praise that is due unto your name. Ancient of days. Great I am. Yahweh is your name. Holy and righteous. Faithful and true. Beautiful in all your ways. Perfect and pure in all your ways. Holy in all your ways. Oh God. You are my strong tower, my shield, my shade upon my right hand. You are my hiding place, my resting place, my rock. You are my all in all, my everything. Everything we are is because of you. Everything I'm not it's because of you. It's in you that we live, move, and have our being. It is not by our power nor by our might, but it is by your Holy Spirit alone. Oh God, we magnify your name. God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah to the one, to the only one who brought us out with a strong hand and a stretched out arm. Hallelujah to the one who brought us through. Brought our people through. Brought us out of Egypt. Brought us through that great and terrible wilderness. Brought us through the Red Sea on dry ground. Brought us through brought us through, brought us out, and are bringing us out into a wealthy place that flows with milk and honey. But there are giants there. We must overcome. We must defeat. We must fight. We must learn war. We must learn war. Rabo soko robo David said, teach my fingers to fight and my hands to war. Make my feet like hind's feet to run through every troop, to leap over every wall. Oh God, teach us, help us, Lord. Help us to know that it's not It's not what, what, what's been shown to us. We must learn. We must learn how to take the land, how to possess the land by faith. We must learn how to put our trust in you by faith. We must learn how to put how to be led by your spirit to wage war against our enemies. We must learn how to abide in you, Father. We must learn how to walk in your ways, how to walk in your truth. We must learn how to stay close to you. We must learn. Father, we humble ourselves and repent for our sins for our transgressions, for everything we've said, done our thoughts, and grieve to quench your Holy Spirit. 
to offend you or any of your people in any way at all. Father, forgive us in Jesus' name. Have mercy upon us this morning. Let the spirit of repentance plead to our hearts every, each and every day. Each and every moment of every day, Father, give us a repentant heart in Jesus' name. That we may bring forth fruits that are meet for repentance. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon our brothers and sisters in Christ, leaders in the body of Christ, operating, functioning in priestly offices, oh God, who don't know you. Those who are preaching a false doctrine another giving the people another spirit and another jesus my god have mercy have mercy have mercy father don't let their lives be cut off in their ignorance in their sin in their foolishness oh god in their greed oh god Help them to repent and find the right way. Help them to repent and return back unto you. Help them to repent, God, in Jesus' name. Let the spirit of repentance cleave to the body of Christ. The spirit of repentance. The spirit of repentance. The spirit of repentance. In Jesus' name. Raise up the Samsons. Raise up the Samsons to cut off these Philistines. Raise up the Samsons in the body of Christ. Rabba so called Rabba see or Namasa. Raise up those of the tribe of Benjamin. Raise up spiritual giants, spiritual warriors. Robo see Rabba Shana. Those who are skilled at war. Those who are skilled at war. Those who are skilled at war, those who walk with you, to cut off every Philistine spirit. Raise up the Davids, men and women after your own heart. Raise up the Samuels, prophets after your own heart. Raise up true seers. Korobosa, who refused to see and prophesy for reward. Raise up your true sons and daughters. Raise up your true sons and daughters. The Spirit of the Lord says, do not give up do not stop what you are doing you who are mine do not stop what you are doing because you are making a difference and in time in due time they will see in due time they will see they will see they will see they will see and they will know that it was i who called you it was I who chose you. It was I who anointed you. It was I who put you into the office of a priest. You are my faithful priest. You are my faithful priest. He said, don't stop what you're doing. Because you may be small in number. Or because you are not being recognized, or you feel like you're not being like you're not being heard at all. Remain 
that little voice, that little boy on the back side of the wilderness tending his father's sheep. Just stay there and, and feed my sheep. Just stay there and tend my sheep, says the Lord. I feel this so strong. My soul is weeping over the body of Christ because so many people are being deceived and manipulated. So many souls, so many souls are being lost. And God is weeping. I see a little shit. He see how, but he has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. If you would just get on board, if you would just get on board with the truth, if you would just get on board with him, he says, I have a plan. I know my, I know my thoughts and my plans for you. I have a plan for you. So many people are being led astray in a time when things are winding up so quickly. Things are winding up so quickly and the Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming soon. I just don't want any of us to be left behind and I don't want any of us to be lost or die in the flower of our age because of our foolishness. God, let us, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to repent before it's too late. Help us to repent before it's too late. Help us to repent before it's too late. Mind of the scripture says, My, how are the mighty fallen? How are the mighty fallen? How are the mighty fallen? Look at these men and these, these women of God that, that we once looked up to. But they they were called of God, but they fell, they fell down. How are the mighty fallen? My heart weeps over them. If you don't feel anything, you know, perhaps maybe you're desensitized, but when you just really sit down and look at this thing, How are the mighty fallen? How? How? Because they got greedy. Because they got greedy. And their lamps went out. They got greedy and their lamps went out. They got greedy and their lamps went out. And the Lord says, This happens over the process of time. You see, it happens in, in the process of time. You may not see anything right now. Because it's happening little by little. And you know, when God blesses his people, he says, I will give you the victory little by little. So on the flip side of the coin, little by little, God is smiling on the small, I told you. <laughs> he 
He said, despise not the day of small beginnings. I am giving you little by little because this is what happens when people get things too fast. Greed takes over. They begin to seek for the fast way and they get it fast and they lose themselves. They begin to lose their own souls in the process of time. In the process of time, God help us. Don't let us fall into these traps. Don't let us fall into these snares of the enemy. Wash us and forgive us for our sins, O oh Lord, for the thoughts of our heart that were not that did not line up with your will, with your purpose, with your plan for us in Jesus' name. Wash us in your blood, O oh God. Cleanse us thoroughly from all filthiness of flesh and spirit. Cleanse us thoroughly from all sin and all unrighteousness in Jesus' name. Help us to make the right choices, to make the right decisions, to be led by your spirit. For you said as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Create in us clean hearts and renew within us the right spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Restore unto us the love of Christ Jesus. Let it be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Knit our hearts together in love, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, let us love one another as you have loved us. That we do not this, that we do not wickedness to one another for selfish gain for selfish gain, for selfish gain. Oh Lord, have mercy and help us, Lord. Have mercy and help us. You are destroying the priesthood of Eli because it was a wicked priesthood and you are raising up Samuels. You are raising up faithful priests that will do according to all that is in your heart. Help us to be sober, to be vigilant. Help us to be wise, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Help us to have zeal with knowledge. That we may seek to know and understand what your will is, what your will is, what your will is. In Jesus' mighty name. Robo secere be In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you that our enemies are defeated and no weapon formed against us will prosper. Cut off our enemies from within and without and beat down every foe before our faces. Let our enemies fall. Let them walk in dark and slippery places in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let your fire consume it in Jesus' name. Cancel every wicked plot, every wicked plan, every wicked strategy, every wicked agenda in the name of Jesus. Let it fall and scatter like ashes in Jesus' mighty name. Let it not prevail. Let it not prevail. Let it not prevail. Father, illuminate our minds with your word. Let your word come alive to us. Let your word speak. Let your word be revealed to us. Let your word become bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. That we may know you. That we may know you. Help us to deny ourselves. To take up our cross and follow you. Help us, Father, to press into you to press into you, to seek you with all our hearts that 
we may find you. To seek you with all our hearts that we may find you. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord. Grace us, O oh Lord. We rebuke and bind the spirit of distraction. The spirit of distraction. Every hindrance in Jesus' name. Every hindering spirit. We bind you now in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. Every, every spirit of distraction. But the Lord says you have to stand up and fight back. You have to be aware of what is distracting you. Push it back. Stop it in its tracks. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. We rebuke it now, Lord. We decree it will not prosper. It will not prosper. It will not prosper. We bind every spirit of distraction and send you to the pit of hell. Your wicked plans will not prosper. Father, remove the feet of your people from every snare and every trap that the enemy has set for them. In Jesus' name, cause them to recover from the snares of the devil. In Jesus' name, help them to recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. In Jesus' mighty name, bind every lying spirit Every spirit that waggeth its tongue, that speaketh lies, that spreads lies. In the name of Jesus, Father, cut off their tongues. Cut off every lying tongue in Jesus' name. We bind you and send you to the pit of hell. In Jesus' name, we call forth and loose and release the spirit of truth to have preeminence in every heart and in every mind. The spirit of truth, Lord, we rebuke and bind the spirit of delusion, the spirit of strong delusion, and the spirit of antichrist. We bind you and banish you to the pit of hell, to the abyss now. In Jesus' name, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you now. You have no power. You have no power. Jesus said, you have no power unless it be given you from above. These spirits don't have power over us unless we give them power. Unless we give them attention. He says, see what they're doing. Yes. Be not ignorant of what they're doing. Yes. Understand what they're doing. Yes. But don't stay too long. Don't stay too long. Don't stay too long. Don't become a part of what they're doing. Because if you keep staring at that thing, it's going to overtake you. It's going to overtake you. It's going to overtake you. Be not ignorant of the devices of your adversary, but don't conform to them. Be not conformed unto this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind in my word, in my word, and in my presence, in my word, and in my presence. In my word and in my presence, says the Lord. They that dwell in the presence, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, I say, Rabusha, you are my refuge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are my rock. And you will I trust. And you will I trust. And you will I trust. Oh, God, I hope somebody is 
getting something out of this today. I hope this is helping you today. I hope it's uncovering and unveiling and revealing the truth to your heart today. In Jesus' name. He says, I'm the one who will make a way for you. You don't need wicked schemes, devices, and plans. I will make a way for you. I will make a road in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. I will spring water out of a rock. I will make a way. I will make a way. See, they had to come through that way. They had to come through that wilderness before they entered into the promised land. Some people just go try to go straight to the promise land, you know? They don't want that wilderness experience, but that's what transforms them. <laughs> and you don't have to spend 40 years in the wilderness, but they did go through the wilderness. They spent that long because of their unbelief. Because they kept having to repeat the same thing over and over again because they kept failing the test. The Lord says, don't fail the test. Don't fail the test. Don't fail the test. This is a faith walk. This is a faith walk. And little by little, little by little, He brought them in and he and he defeated their enemies. I wonder why it says little by little. I wonder why. We be trying to get ahead of ourselves. We run too fast and we take too much on. The Lord said little by little. Little by little. Little by little. Be patient. This is fruit of the Spirit. Be patient. Be patient, says the Lord, so you don't fall into a trap or into a snare. Grant us patience. Grant us patience. Grant us your patience. In Jesus' name. I'm going to let you go. I love you. May the Lord bless and keep all of you. I don't know how long I've been on. It's time for me to go. I have to go. I'll be back uh, today. So just go to my YouTube page. And um, there'll be a video posted for you. And I'll also I'll repost this. I'll post this on YouTube and on the podcast. And uh, preparing that message from Sunday uh, to share. I'll, I'll release that on the podcast. Okay, it's not going to be on IG and it's not going to be on YouTube. It's just going to be on the podcast. You can go there and listen. Um, but uh, I love you all with the love of the Lord. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you. Bless your day, bless the remainder of your week. And may the Lord open your eyes. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you. In the days of King Uzziah, he said, when King Uzziah died, the eyes saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. High and lifted up. And his train was filling the temple. We need to see the Lord now. But your flesh must die. Your carnal desires, your greed must die. We have to die to those desires in order to see the Lord. In order to see the Lord. That means it cannot be at the forefront of your mind. That's not the thing that you want to see most. That's not the thing that you want first. You want the Lord first. In Jesus' name, God bless you. 
May the Lord help us and be with us and walk with us and have mercy and grant us patience in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. Bye-bye.